People who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. That's a saying that uh, has a lot of validity to it, I think. And what I'm going to say next is probably going to be hard to swallow. So I think that those that I will be talking about shortly need to understand that I'm talking as a friend, so to speak. I have always been quite sympathetic towards the anger, the frustration and so on and the sense of unfairness that a lot of Muslims must be feeling about what is going on in countries in the Middle East for example and how Western countries have been behaving in that area, those parts of the world I have always been quite accepting of this the emotional response that you must have to what is going on in your part of the world and of course I don't expect you to take my word for that in fact what I would suggest you do if you don't believe me when I tell you this just look up on YouTube and go searching for videos by people who have decided that I am cozying up to the Muslims in other words Go and look for videos by Islamophobes, by bigots, people who actually do hate Muslims and who are looking at my videos that I have posted in the past and who have decided that I am cozying up to you and that I am a muzzy lover as they would call it, the bigots, they would call it that way. So go and look that up and see how many people have decided that I am kissing up to the Muslims if you don't believe me when I'm telling you that I generally speaking have a friendly disposition towards well people from other faiths you see when it comes to Muslims I don't see any reason to treat people who call themselves Muslim any different from any other people and that is very simply I will interact with any other person any other human being on a one-to-one -one basis and on that I will base my assessment about that person and on that alone the fact that they happen to be a Muslim or an atheist or a Christian or whatever else is irrelevant let's see how they deal with me, how they respond to me, how they interact with me and then I'll decide whether I like this person or I don't and whatever else. Why am I saying all this? Okay, I, I'm leading into this like this because what I'm going to say next is probably and especially if I hadn't set that baseline there, if I hadn't kind of explained where I was coming from it would be very easy to say like oh there's just another you know anti-islamic islamophobe scumbag who just wants to jump onto the muslim hating gravy train and there's no such thing happening here i am not even going to mention islam from this moment onwards i'm just going to make a generic observation about what's going on and before I start, I want to go back in time a bit. I want to go back to the 20th century and I want you to think about the mistakes that were made by another organization. An organization that calls itself the Roman Catholic Church. And this organization was observing that its influence on the world was waning. It was losing its iron grip on societies and areas of the world on which it until then had had an awful lot of influence and it didn't like that one bit and as a sort of knee-jerk reaction the Roman Catholic Church would start looking at movies for example and books that were coming out of increasingly secular parts of the world and it would start branding some movies and some books as blasphemous 
and it would make grand public announcements about how a certain book or a certain movie was blasphemous and it would instruct Roman Catholics all over the world to not go and look at those movies, not go and read those books. And of course, the result of this was inevitable, wasn't it? The Catholic Church would declare something blasphemous and people would flock to it. They would flock to go and see the movies, they would queue and go and buy the book. And this happened so many times that it had become so much of a joke that by the end of the 20th century, in the 90s, in one of my favorite sitcoms, Father Ted, they included an episode that they called The Passion of St. Tibulus, in which they lampooned this situation and there was a movie came out called The Passion of St. Tibulus and Ted and Dougal were instructed to go demonstrating outside the cinema. They chained themselves to the railings of the cinema, which the cinema on Craggy Island, but of course, in actual fact, it was a cinema right here in my hometown of Greystones. Just a little trivia there. But that cinema, and they stood outside with placards saying, down with this sort of thing and careful now. And of course, people started flocking to the cinema to go and see what all the hullabaloo was about. And that's what's happening here as well. Except, of course, while the Passion of St. Tibullus and what was happening in there was quite funny, and the Roman Catholic Church, um, yeah, had become quite a bit of a joke by the time it was starting to condemn all these books and films. Yeah, now we're looking at riots in front of embassies and people actually ending up being killed. But ultimately, with the violence and all, even if you set that aside for a moment, the end result is still going to be exactly the same. And that is the problem here. That is where people are not learning from history. And while I have all the sympathy in the world for the reason why movies like this cause such outpourings of anger and frustration, in the end, it is still going to be just as counterproductive as Ted and Dougal standing out outside that cinema with their placards. In the end, all you will have achieved is that even more people are now aware of the existence of this movie. Even more people might go and see that movie and be convinced with what is being said in that movie. Is that what you wanted? I don't think it is. But that's what you've achieved. Not too smart.